morning. Praise the Lord. Let us pray for the word. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you this wonderful morning for your love and for your care. Indeed, Heavenly Father, you love us with an everlasting love. Thank you because, dear Lord, you never count our sins, but you are always ready to forgive us. Lord, accept us in thy presence this day. This is our prayer in Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Uh, this morning, we are going to look at an interesting title, A Time of Chastenizing. And our scripture is from Hebrews 12, verse 8 uh, to, verse 5 to 8. Hebrews 12, 5 to 8. And you have, and have you completely forgotten this word of encouragement that addresses you as a father addresses his son? It says, my son, do not make light of the Lord's discipline, and do not lose heart when he rebukes you, because the Lord disciplines the one he loves, and he chastens everyone he accepts as his son. Endure hardship as discipline. God is treating you as his children, for what children are not disciplined by their father. If you are not disciplined, and everyone that goes discipline, then you are not legitimate, not true sons and daughters at all. Chastenizing, or in a simpler uh, English, we can call it pruning, or just discipline. In this uh, boot camp where we have uh, enlisted, we said that discipline is very, very important. It's one of the characteristics of a soldier. And there is no way you are going to acquire discipline if there is no one correcting you. So we need to build uh, the character of a soldier and it is important we also distinguish between testing which was covered yesterday, and chastenizing or a discipline. Chastenizing is a, a time of repenting. Many people seem to assume that once they are Christians, they are exempted from God's uh, discipline, and especially when they've been believers for any length of time. This attitude, as we have read in Hebrews 12, has no basis in scripture. Because as verse 6 tells us, because the Lord disciplines the one he loves. So anytime we are being chastened, it is because God treats us as his sons and daughters, and he is our father. He is uh, looking out to our uh, to our being edified in faith. We are going to look at the servant of the Lord Moses as um, a guide on our topic today so that we understand that the fact that God is disciplining us doesn't mean that we do not belong to God or it doesn't mean that you have backslidden as a born again Christian. Moses was called and given a very noble task of setting the children of Israel free from the slavery of Egypt. That you can read in Exodus 4. But while he was going back, he met with the Lord and God sought to kill him. And this was because Moses had been disobedient. There was a covenant between Abraham and God in Genesis chapter number 17, of circumcising the sons. This, while Moses was in Midian, he never did for his son, and this is why God wanted to punish him. Now, not brethren, that even though you are a leader, or even though you are a born-again Christian, you are 
actually the person who is supposed to be so sensitive to the spirit of God and obey totally. And despite his position as a reader, called by God himself, Moses was to be accountable to God, just like it is expected of you and me. Remember, God is the porter and we are the crane, and so he has the final say in our lives. Don't expect to complete your God-given assignment if you make room for disobedience in your life. And when we come under the dealings of God, we need to humble ourselves before him and pray the prayer of David in Psalms 139, verse 23 and 22, which says, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. And now, what God will reveal to you as the area where you've uh, had in your Christian walk, it should be a point of turning to God. Not when we are expected to repent and we don't, then we are guilty of insensitivity and stubbornness. And instead of submitting to God, we are full of pride. So now in the midst of the storm that we are all passing through, we need also to be praying a prayer which is in Psalms 19, verse 12 and 13, which says, who can understand his errors? Cleanse me from sacred faults. Keep back your servant from also, from willful sins. Let them not have dominion over me then I shall be blameless and I shall be innocent of great transgression. Note that David was very sensitive uh, to the chastenizing of God. He even lost a son because the Lord was uh, punishing him for uh, being uh, idolatrous and also being a murderer. Very often when God um, you know, reveals sins in us. We need to choose to humble ourselves and invite him to search us and lay bare our inmost uh, motives. Sometimes we may commit sins and we presume that it is acceptable to God when it is not. So we should sincerely allow the Lord to search our hearts. And when he puts his finger on anything that is offensive to him, then we may need uh, to repent. If then there is nothing offensive to God, then we'll know, like in the case of Job, that we are undergoing testing. But let's be sincere, brethren, that most of the times uh, we actually fall under chastenizing, not under testing. Because, as it said, if we say we have no sins, we deceive ourselves. So before God, we need to acknowledge our sin. And if God really was to judge us according to the number of sins we commit every day, I don't think anyone would be standing but we thank God because of his grace and for purchasing us with the precious blood of Jesus. And so in this, indeed, we are justified. So as soldiers in God's army, let us in humility come before him and repent in dust and ashes, and he'll heal us, and he'll heal the, our land, and he'll heal the world. In the name of God the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.